Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today, I'm going to be showing you the easy way to remove those brake rotor screws, the ones that are really tough to get off. Yeah, I'm going to show you the easy way to go about doing it. Alright guys, and the tools you'll use for today's video, or at least the tools I used, was a 32 ounce hammer, a Phillips head screwdriver, an impact screwdriver or impact driver and you're not going to want to use the one from Harbor Freight as you'll find out in the video. A propane torch, some kind of penetrating lubricant, PB blaster uh, works well. We also used a flathead screwdriver like this, a flathead screwdriver like this and you'll want combination wrenches to be able to work the little fastener part on your screwdriver in order to assist us with getting those rotor screws out. So with all that said, we'll go ahead and begin today's project. Okay, so here we are, we're at the rotor and we've got these two screws that need to come out in order for us to be able to take off this rotor. So if you're having a really difficult time removing the screws like I did, then I'm going to show you what exactly you want to do to take these guys off. Now, the first thing I suggest you do is take some PB Blaster or other kind of penetrating lubricant and you're basically just going to spray a little bit on there, let it soak for a little bit and then the first thing I do, well obviously you're going to want to try, hopefully it'll just come right off but it's probably not going to happen, but you can take an impact screwdriver, it'll look like this and you can get one of these at Harbor Freight and Northern Tools. Uh, there should be a link down below in the video description to take you to the, the Northern Tools site and you should be able to find something kind of similar to this. And the idea behind this tool is you're gonna push down and when it's pushing down, if you could imagine, this guy is going to spin left on you. So it's, it's gonna loosen up and then it also, on most of the tools like this, you can push up and turn and then when you hit it like that then it's going to spin it right. I don't know why you'd need that unless there was a uh, opposite threaded thing it, to where you'd have to loosen it by spinning it right. So but we're going to spin it back to, to so when we hit it it's going to spin it left. So basically the idea behind this tool is you're going to hold it up against that screw and then you'll take a 32 ounce hammer like this and you're gonna bang on it here. And like I said, when you bang on it, it's going to twist the screw. So we're gonna have a really good grip because we're gonna be hitting it and at the moment of impact with this, it's gonna be turning. So you don't really have that kind of grip on the screw normally. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll start by using this method. I'm just gonna hit on it here. And then we'll take our screwdriver here and see if that did anything. And no, it's still in there. So, and again, when you do this, you're gonna wanna push and then kinda of turn it left too. And that's gonna help you out a little bit. So turn it left, push in, hold it in with your hand there real well. And then, see how that did? And it's still not done. Um, it's it's really, <laughs> This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight, so I would recommend uh, Northern Tools, a little bit better quality. You can see right there, we've, we've already damaged our bit there just a little bit and I've also damaged the fastener, at least on this one I did when I was using that method. So it's it's good to, to use a little bit more expensive tool when we purchase this one. I spent about seven bucks on this. You could expect to spend a little bit more Northern Tools, but it'll it'll last you longer, so that's a good thing. The, the next method I'd suggest you use is you want to get yourself a, a Phillips head screwdriver like this where we can put a combination wrench on the end and what I'll do is I'm going to stick my guy right in here and I'm going to hammer him again and then I'm going to take my combination wrench and I'm going to spin him and you can see how it's turning on me so I'm going to kind of spin him back and if you have a finned rotor like this one where you can stick a screwdriver down in there and you're doing this by yourself you can use that as a holder and if not if you have the regular one without the fins then you'll have to get a friend maybe to hold it for you so but what I could do is I could just stick it down in there and it'll it'll help me hold it right there 
So now when I get a spin, oh, we, we came off there, so I'm gonna wash, rinse, and repeat. I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna try and get a better position there. That looks a little better. And it's important that we hammer this guy in because that's gonna make him stick in there a little bit better. Now I'm just gonna take my combination wrench. and it came off again. So, the other thing we can do is you can take a propane torch like this, and again, you could get this somewhere like Northern Tools, uh, I think Walmart also carries it, and you're basically gonna light up there, and we're, we're gonna work that flame, the blue tip of the flame, right around the screw, not actually on the screw, but on the rotor, right around, and that may also help us. I'm confident that if I keep using this impact, and I keep using that other method that I showed you, that's gonna prove successful. So that's what I'm gonna keep repeating. I'm gonna make sure my tool is spinning the right way, and it is, it's spinning left. So I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna wash, rinse, and repeat. I'm gonna hold it right here and and we'll see if that did anything. Oh, it did. So again, I'm just gonna take this guy, and I'm gonna let the, the film kind of roll as I do this, just to show you that this, this does work, it does take time, but you'll see I'm confident we're gonna have this done. You'll see it's, it's gonna prove effective and it's gonna work, so. Oh, and I can feel it start to turn on me there, and when you feel really coming off it and you can feel it start to turn, you, you don't wanna damage it any more than it already is. So again, I'll just work with my impact guy right here, and he might be damaged too much. Yeah, it feels like he is, so I'm gonna have to take another bit. I've just grabbed another bit right here, and this is the one I was using earlier, and it's it's already, that bit's damaged as well. So that's the thing I don't like about Harbor Freight is the stuff just, it kind of falls apart. It's almost like one use, usage kind of tools. But, I mean, it does what it needs to do, just not quite as well. I'd like to. And we'll try it again. Okay guys, so I've kind of lost faith in my, my Harbor Freight impact screwdriver right here it did work to get the one side off it just uh, they couldn't seem to make it work twice so there's a one use tool right there it's not working anymore but I have removed many of these rotor screws without an impact screwdriver and before I even go to the propane method because it's just really time consuming I'm still gonna try and do it without it. I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver I know this is a Phillips head but I'll grab that in just a second but I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver and then we're gonna start by working on the sides of the fastener here where we'd catch and then we're gonna bang down um, on the left side so it's gonna turn it left and that method's proven uh, effective many times for me so we're gonna try that and see if that doesn't loosen up our fastener okay now here we are I've got my big flathead screwdriver I'm just gonna kind of wedge them right in there and then I'm gonna begin to hit right here and I might try my smaller one. It might be a little bit more effective. And that one's pretty much wasted it seems like, so I'm gonna try it from another angle. And now we're gonna see if that didn't loosen it up any. And it doesn't seem like it did, so we're just gonna be patient and keep on keeping on until this guy budgets. Okay, and another thing you can try, guys, is take a flat head, even though it's a Phillips head, and you may be able to get some better bite. So we're gonna try dropping this flathead into the screw a little bit. 
just like that and then again we have that that fastener type thing on there we can we can get on here and we're gonna spin and I'm not really grabbing but I'm just gonna kind of keep trying to find a place where I can work it in there and another thing I can do to try and repair this fastener a little bit is I can take my flathead and just kind of hit on there like that and what I'm doing is I'm making the fastener, I'm changing the form of the fastener a little bit so this flathead might be able to stick in there a little bit and you can try a different a few different Phillips head and flathead screwdrivers to see which one fits in the best and you really just want to drive it in there so it's like stuck in there and then you'll use the combination wrench to kind of turn it. Okay guys, now what I decided to do here since I just couldn't get over the fact that 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 impact driver only got the, the one side was I went back to Harbor Freight and I chose their other impact driver option here. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to try this again and hopefully this new driver should be able to get the job done for us. We're going to see. Well, at least it's not spinning on us, so that's, that's good news. We're just gonna keep on trying here. Okay guys, so this tool actually only made it the one hit and it decided to break, but instead of taking it back to Harbor Freight, what I did was I took it apart, tried to modify it a little bit, tried to help it. We're gonna try it one more time and see if it doesn't break again. And uh, again, the idea guys is this should twist left while we hit down. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try it again and see if our tool doesn't break. Okay guys, and by using that method, I was able to break it loose there, and it was funny, I wish I'd have got it on camera, but I didn't. But on that last hit, I felt something pop my pinky as I was holding it and I was banging on it. And I turn around and, and we look, the tool actually broke, the ball came out and broke this little metal piece. I'll zoom in and give you a better picture. So, this is what happened guys. The the tool actually broke here and like I said, Harbor Freight is really a, a one-time use kind of tool in some situations and this situation is actually proven true. So, uh, impact driver will work on this particular application for this problem. Just try and use something other than Harbor Freight because you can see here today I've had a really tough time with the Harbor Freight tools. So, Northern Tools or any other kind of tool company will be able to provide this, this kind of thing. It's an impact driver and like I said I have a link down below in the video description to take you to the Northern Tools website you should be able to find it by searching for impact driver and again if you do use that link you're gonna be helping me because it'll just let them know that I was the one that referred you so uh, that pretty much sums up today's video you saw here exactly how I got rotor screw with the impact driver method there so that's how I did it and uh, I thank you guys for watching today and I'll see you next time Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time and I will see you then.